started racing when I was five, and it's really all I've wanted to do. He was fortunate to uh, rise up the ranks pretty quick in open wheel in the U.S., and then drove an IndyCar 97, 98, 99. 1999 won the uh, Las Vegas race, and uh, all was great. <laughs> Till four months later, I hit the wall, uh, blew apart my C3, C4 vertebrae, and uh, they said I'd never, probably never make it five years and be on a ventilator. So that was 21 years ago. They began with Arrow. Seven years ago, they were trying to pick them away that they could tell a story of how they can, you know, put things together in a quick fashion. So uh, they, they came up with the idea of designing a car for somebody to drive they can't use their arms and legs. And uh, I was fortunate to get the call. Yeah, I mean, the latest evolution is, is very intuitive in that uh, I turn my head to the left and the car goes left and turn to the right, goes to the right. And uh, I have a straw in my mouth, which a lot of uh, quadriplegics are familiar with because it's a sip and puff and I blow to go and I suck the stop. And again, it's, it's very intuitive and uh, um, got a lot of practice with it. Uh, you just got to focus on not turning on a straightaway. If I want to hold it at 60, I just put it on 60, uh, cover up the tube with my tongue just like cruise control. And uh, fortunately, we haven't sneezed or had anything, but that's why we have the co-driver uh, as, a, as a backup of redundancy uh, to make sure you know nothing can happen to anybody else. But fortunately, in seven years, we haven't had to use them. That first time back in 2014 with all the drivers out there, all my family, we went 107, which 100 was the goal. Uh, you know, there wasn't a dry eye in the crowd because it was, it was uh, you know, about 15 years since my accident. And again, I uh, never thought I'd drive again, let alone go that fast and go back to Indy and be in a Corvette. I mean, it's, it's like the perfect storm. The kind of the main question on the table is, how can we make people's lives better with anything that we can do? Uh, one of the people uh, just reached out and said, hey, you know, I, I know a race car driver that got hurt and uh, he's a quadriplegic. He could, he could benefit from something we can do, surely. Uh, and that's, that's really where the, uh, the idea started taking off. And, uh, and it just, it, it, it obviously where we're ending up now in a C8. <laughs> So in the car, we have several different cameras located here. If um, you see the four cameras that are shooting at the American passenger side, that shoots infrared light towards these infrared bubbles that are here, or otherwise known as mocap dots. So when the uh, driver moves their head left or right, you can see the wheels moving as well. See the, the resolution is actually quite great. Um, it's actually down to a, a hair follicle of, uh, of resolution, so it's, it's wonderful. That allows him to control the steering wheel, um, but uh, you're probably wondering how he controls gas and, uh, and brake. Well, that's done through a tube that's in his mouth. Um, so I don't have the, the quite the same adapter, but the concept is similar. And then sit to stop. Right, so you can uh, you can kind of control the amount of acceleration you provide, or you can blow real hard and get a, a large acceleration. All right, so inside the vehicle, uh, we have a number of different systems going on here. Uh, the first thing we have to do is hook into the, the the systems that actually control the acceleration and the steering. Um, so that's this system here. Uh, it's an off-the-shelf component by Paravan, and it allows us to uh, control the, uh, the drive. It, it's, it's something that's typically called drive-by-wire or fly-by-wire. Um, and that allows us to control digitally uh, the systems of moving the pedals back and forth and or moving the steering column. Our main uh, communication strategy is all ethernet. Um, so you'll see a bunch of different wires in here and that just allows us to pass information extremely quickly to all the systems that need it. Uh, going in further in the system, uh, we have a, uh, a, a box that, that really manages our cameras and those cameras are powered off of ethernet. Um, and they uh, take in all the images from Sam in the helmet uh, and that, uh, that allows us to say, okay, the, the head's aimed left or the head's aimed right. 
Then that information along with the uh, sip and puff information, which is a, a pressure system, um, goes to our maiden guidance computer, which is that black computer down there. And it really decides where and how the car is gonna operate, whether or not we're going to go forward, um, turn left, turn right. Um, it, it just gets all that information and decides from there. Disc brakes and rear view mirrors and countless other things were created in the motorsports industry that made its way to automotive. And I think with as you see this push towards autonomous vehicles, a lot of what we have on this car can be used in that transition and, uh, and ultimately when it happens. So it's really a showcase for Aero and what their capabilities are to be able to help the OEMs accomplish their goals. They're not gonna create a whole car from scratch, but they can certainly provide all of the ingredients required for autonomous driving. So, you know, we're right on the, we're right on the edge of it, really. I think it was the natural racer to begin with. Um, you know, racing is a very selfish sport. And ironically, what's happening as a result of this project is uh, the ability to show people what is possible if they put their mind to it and they work hard. And then our foundation uh, is really uh, driven to put people back to work and you know, take down the barriers, any barriers they may have to enjoying their life. And, and so it's funny how it's transitioned from, you know, sort of individualistic pursuits to group pursuits and this whole like group of disabled veterans and other people that they want to go to work. They want to go live their life. They just need a little help, you know, so that's what it's all about. We have the car as a great way to show their performance um, and it gives Sam a lot of freedom. I'd like to give Sam and other people like him more freedom through technology.